All right, Shalom, Akim Shalom. It's the brother Yahweh Shapat coming at you with another lesson through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem, Rakakwadash. Double honors to my elders and apostles at Great Millstone who do teach and rule well in these scriptures. Peace and blessings to the hopeful elect. To you brothers that's on the highways and the byways, pushing his word out in truth and sincerity, risking your lives and your freedom to do so now, so more than ever. To you, I say Shalom. To you, Akim and Akwakim, who are listening and learning, I say Shalom to you all. Now, um, the name of this lesson is going to be The Mark of the Beast is Physical. And I'll try to keep it short and simple and uh, to the point as much as I can through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah, you know. And uh, we're just going to get straight into it. I got Revelations, the 13th chapter. Pull it up in the Blue Letter Bible. And to those of us who are in the know, those of us who are, you know, seasoned in this truth, you've been in for at least one or two years, going on three years or whatever, you know, it, it's pretty much like, um, you know, it's plain and simple to us. You know what I'm saying? You know, and um, if you how about some y'all with is dealing with you, it'll be plain and simple unto you. So going into the into linear and when you look up the word for mark the word there is karagma now just to cut to iuspk um they always say that the mark of the beast is christianity or, or an embargo you know i've done this before but Hey, you know, it's, it's, it's not a bad thing for you to repeat scriptures. It's not a bad thing for you to review things that you've taught before. You know, uh, I've heard Elder Apostle Gabar say this a lot of times. Repetition is the father of skill. You know what I'm saying? So to repeat something is going to make you skillful in that thing, whatever it may be. You know, that's why they say practice makes perfect. You know what I'm saying? So... It says, uh, I'm going to play it so brothers and sisters hear, can hear it. Strong G, 5480, Karagma, Karagma. We say Karagma, they say Karagma, you know, same thing. Let's go to the Strongs. It says a scratch or etching, i.e. a stamp as a badge of servitude or sculpture, figure, statue, grave, and mark. Because when you look into the history, which which let, let me first clarify this: the mark of the beast is going to be a physical thing. It's going to be a scratch or a marking or etching in your flesh. If you get a chip in your flesh, they're gonna have to cut your flesh to insert the chip. You know, like it's a kemp to like when you go to the club and they stamp your hand to show that you paid to get in. That way, if you walk out. You can come back in without being uh, having to get checked. It's like a stamp or a sketching, or a, you know, and it, and it says here the the karagma, the mark of the beast. It'll be used as a badge of servitude, meaning that you're dedicating your servitude to Esau, the so-called white man, and to his beast system. You know, so the mark of the beast is a physical thing. It's and just like to, just to break it down. I'm gonna get that. I'm gonna try and pull that precept up. Because uh, the scriptures talk about what's gonna happen to, to those who receive the mark of the beast. You know. And that's in Revelations 14 and 9. Because if, if the mark of the beast was Christianity, most of us who are so-called black, Latino, and Native American, we've been under some den uh, denomination of Christianity, whether it be Catholicism, Baptist, uh, Baptist you know, uh, what else? It's just, just those other denominations of Christianity, all the Israelites, have taken part in some form of that. 
So, if the mark of the beast was Christianity, we would all be fucking uh, cooked, man. You know? So, and, and, and the Heavenly Father, according to the scriptures, according to Zechariah 13 and 8, there's a remnant. The one-third is going to make it out of here, the one-third and the elect. So, the Heavenly Father's got to be dealing with somebody. All of us can't just be missile food, man. You know? The, you know what I'm saying? So, it says, Revelations 14 and 9. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast in his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of Yahweh, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. Meaning, you know, um, you're going to have, you're going to be missile food, basically. You know? Because that's the fire and brimstone that's ta that it's talking about. You know? And it says, And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast and his image. And whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. You know, so basically if you take that chip and you're a so-called Negro, Latino, Native American, you're through. You know? If you receive the mark, you're through. This is your judgment. You know what I'm saying? So it, it can't be Christianity, you know, um, or an embargo. An embargo is like a, a ban on trade. For a certain country, like I believe Iran just had an embargo lifted off of them, you know. So now that they now they can purchase certain things, um, and an embargo is put on a country, not on an individual, you know. So it, it couldn't it couldn't be Christianity or an embargo, because no individual person is a is a a, a whole country. And the, and the scriptures say that he causeth all both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. Meaning everybody's subject to this, whether you rich or poor, free or bond. So, yeah, the mark of the beast is it's, it's a physical mark, man. And, you know, it's talking about in your right hand and in your forehead. So, let's see, uh. Let's see. I want to get this. Um, about this guy named Ian Burkhart. Because this is some. This is what's what the mark of the beast is gonna incapable is gonna uh, make people capable of doing. And that's why a lot of people are going to take it. A lot of Jakes are going to take it. A lot of Edomites are going to take it. <sighs> Salakia, Salakia. Uh, hopefully this, this article doesn't take, you know, forever to load up. But the Heavenly Father is going to give Esau, the so-called white man, the power on the left-hand side to perform certain miracles by way of his beast technology. You know, and... Uh, this guy got a brain implant, which goes back to Revelation 13 and 16. As a matter of fact, skip the article. No, we'll cut that. Basically, the guy, Ian Burkhart, he's a guy who got a brain implant. And um, what that brain implant allows him to do is, whereas he was physically enabled, you know, and paralyzed, he can move certain parts of his body due to that brain chip implant that he got. You know, and it's uh the same. Te it's that beast technology, and that's why the scriptures say they going You know, the, the mark is gonna be put in either into your right hand or into your forehead. You know, so again, that 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 mark of the beast is physical, man. It's not something that's it, you know, it's tangible. It's a ta it's it's a literal tangible thing that's gonna be forced and pushed out on. All so-called U.S. citizens, man. They plan on basically trying to chip anybody and everybody. And if you're not going to take that chip, you're going to either be put to death or thrown in a prison. You know? So, yeah, that, that pretty much cuts it. That proves it. Just going into the blue letter, you know, which 
we who are taught under the elders and apostles of Great Millstone to do, we go into the blue letter, man. We, we you know, we check things. We um go into these different words. You know, we have to to get a full understanding of these scriptures because the scriptures weren't written in English first. They were written in Hebrew first and then in Greek. So you're going to have things that are lost in translation. You have to go into the blue letter Bible. You got to go into these words and break them down. Well, rather we do. And, and and when you learn and when you hear from us, you're supposed to go and try and do it yourself. You know, the scriptures tell you, study to show thyself approved. I'm roughly paraphrasing that scripture, you know. Don't just take what we saying at face value. You supposed to go and check it out. And um, as a matter of fact, let me see something. Bear with me, Aki and Baba Kusha. Seventeen and eleven, cause you know you, a lot of people blindly follow other camps. You know, what I was taught is not to blindly follow the apostles and the, the, G, the, the apostles and elders of GMS, but to, you know, keep in mind what they're saying and go and, and check it out for myself and make sure. You know, and and that's and who those of you who are learning. From us, the men who are under Great Millstone, under that banner, or under the, you know, we teaching that doctrine. You know, you're supposed to go check and make sure that we're not telling you a lie, man. Because a lot of these these guys from these other camps, they go off and they push that on on, on, on Israel. And then, you know, they end up sending a lot of people off. And then when we, you know, brothers and the apostles and elders and brothers come out and, and make a correction... Then everybody like, okay, well, damn, yeah, that's because you were supposed to be going into that. Well, and then that's their fault too. They're supposed to be teaching you how to, you know, hey, go into these scriptures, go into these different words. You gotta, you gotta check things for yourself, man. You know, kind of like um, when you get your food from the drive-through. You know, you if you got it, if you in your right mind, you don't just roll off because shit, man. You might something something might be missing from your bag. They might have gave you might have ordered two burgers. They gave your bag is one burger. Now you got to check to make sure things are are what they're supposed to be. So let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh, the apostle Paul he commanded the church of Berea. This is Acts 17 and 10 for, for going to for listening and also going to check and see if 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 what was spoken was was true. This is Acts 17 and 10. So don't just be a hearer of the word, be a doer of the word as well. You know what I'm saying? You're supposed to hear the word, check it, study. You know what I'm saying? You got to study to show y'all show yourself approved. This is Acts 17 and 10. And the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas. By night unto Berea, who coming thither went into the synagogue of the Jews. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind, and searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so. So even if you're not a teacher and you're just a listener, you're supposed to be studying too. You know what I'm saying? No, you got to study, man. Um... It's Revelations 1 and 3. Blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy. So you're supposed to read and hear. It says, and keep those things which are written therein, being a doer of the word and not a hearer only. For the time is at hand. So don't just listen. Study. Don't just study. Do. According, act accordingly. Once you, you know, you know how to act. You know what I'm saying? According to the Holy Scriptures. But with that, I'm going to close out, man. That's really pretty much all I got. 
you know, and until the next one, I say Shalom. Hopefully, this lesson was edifying through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah Bashem Rakakwadash.